Today, I'm going to discuss a very important topic, how to detoxify the plastic out of your brain, the microplastics. The brain accumulates the most microplastics of all of the organs. The brain accumulates seven to 30 times more microplastics than the liver and the kidneys. Today, I'm going to talk about how to get rid of this plastic not just the plastics, but something else called forever chemicals. They bind with proteins in your blood, creating all sorts of problems, especially as they built up in, it's called bioaccumulate over time. This is a very important video because if you can do something about this now, you can prevent a lot of problems down the road. In one report that I saw, an average person has seven grams of plastic in their brain. The first thing you need to know about plastics is the big scam about plastic recycling as simply a way to get you to keep buying plastic items. Only 9% of all the plastics are able to be recycled. The vast majority of plastics, either they're incinerated or the great majority of it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. If you look on the, the bottom of the plastic containers, you'll see a little it looks like a recycling symbol. Just gives an impression that, oh yeah, oh, this can be recycled. Well, check out this clip right here. Recycling is expensive and labor intensive and making new plastic from fossil fuels is almost always cheaper forever. Plastic industry documents clearly concluded that there were no effective market mechanisms for mixed plastic and that there is serious doubt that it can ever be made viable on an economic basis. There was never an enthusiastic belief that uh, recycling was ultimately going to work in a significant way. I think they knew that the infrastructure wasn't there to really have recycling amount to a whole lot. If the public thinks the recycling is working, then they're not going to be as concerned about the environment. I will let you know there are certain technologies that are being created right now using microbes that eat plastic and fungi that can eat plastic. There are certain types of enzymes that are developed that can eat plastic. But until those are developed, there's really two things that you can do. Number one, avoid plastics, which I'm going to get into. And number two, we can do things in our body to help detoxify some of this plastic in forever chemicals. Let's first talk about the brain. There is a type of lymphatic system in our brain. It's like a dishwasher. It helps clean up stuff. That system really occurs when you're getting a really good amount of deep sleep. High quality deep sleep is going to be necessary to help get rid of plastics in your brain. Another way we can get rid of plastics is by inducing something called autophagy, where you're cleaning up some of this toxicity. The best way to induce autophagy is through fasting. You need to fast for at least 18 hours to get into some significant amount of autophagy. The thing with plastics and forever chemicals is it creates a lot of oxidative stress, which you can counter if you have a strong antioxidant systems in the body. Consuming foods high in sulfur, that would be garlic, onions, cruciferous vegetables. There's other natural remedies called NAC, milk thistle, tadka are all great remedies. Now let's get into the probably the most important thing to get rid of the forever chemicals as well as the plastics. If you have city water, boy, you have to get a water filter that can help remove plastic, find a good one with really good reviews, or a whole house unit. Let's go through some other really important things because you're gonna be surprised how you're getting plastics just with your routine that you do on a daily basis with cooking. Plastic cutting boards need to go. You need to replace those with wood cutting boards because as you're cutting on the plastic, you're just kind of breaking up the plastic particles and putting them right in the food. Next one, dishwasher pods. You put these little pods in there and you don't even probably think twice. You need to replace those like I did with something that doesn't have plastic. Coffee filters have plastic. So you want to get some coffee filters if you use them. The ones that are more certified biodegradable. And as far as your sea salt goes, I would highly recommend getting a sea salt from an ancient seabed, not from the ocean, because unfortunately there are plastics in the ocean that end up in the salt. Even tea bags can have plastic. Get the tea bags that are more natural and that are plastic free. Baby bottles. Of course, breastfeeding is the best thing to do, but if you can't do that, get a glass bottle. Now, the problem is the nipple is usually plastic and you can't use a glass nipple. It's going to be really hard to find a completely plastic free nipple. Even if you get like the uh, little nipple for the bottle and it's just pure silicone, it's going to be a little bit better. 
I would go with that. I would definitely start getting a stainless steel water bottle instead of the plastic bottles and fill your own water with the water that you can trust. When you're at the grocery store and you're buying cleaning things, get the plastic-free sponges. And I'm just putting this on your radar because you probably didn't realize there are such a thing, but you just need to be aware of it. Here's another source of a lot of this plastic, the inside layer of cans. Even the canned carbonated water that I used to drink a lot of, I no longer drink canned water. Cans are lined with this thin layer of plastic. You don't want that. I would avoid canned food, canned liquids. What about toothbrushes? They have bamboo toothbrushes that actually has the brushes out of bamboo, not plastic. Again, another simple solution. It doesn't cost that much more. All we're trying to do is lessen the load of plastics on your body. Your cookware, uh, the Teflon. Get rid of those pots, replace it with stainless steel or ceramic. I would never heat anything in the microwave in plastic, ever. Also get glass containers to store your food in, not the plastics as much as you can. Of course, if you're eating popcorn that's from a bag that you put in the microwave, it's completely lined with that plastic. Really be careful of what you put in the microwave. Dental floss is another hidden source of some plastic. I'm sure it's not going to give you a lot. But there are dental floss products that don't have plastics or forever chemicals. Tampons. Get the 100% organic cotton tampons. If you start now reducing the load of plastics and forever chemicals on your body, this will prevent a lot of problems down the road. And I'm all about preventing things. Unfortunately, medicine is not about preventing things. Medicine is about doing screenings when you get older every six months to kind of, oh, we're catching the disease in a certain state, so then we can treat it with medication early. That's not prevention. Screenings are not prevention. What I'm talking about in this video is actual prevention. So make note, spread the word, and I will see you in the next video. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress, and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special, if you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually.
So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.